Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over 6 worked examples to show you how to do problems involving distance and displacement. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory videos covering distance and displacement, the scale diagram method and the calculation method, as watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. So I'll firstly show you one worked example for the scale diagram method, then one worked example for the calculation method, and then we'll do a mix of questions after that. So our one worked example for the scale diagram method says that Mr Mitchell, that's me, travels 600 metres north, then 800 metres west, in his new metallic indium grey Volkswagen Golf Evo match edition, that's my current car just now. And then in part A it says find the total distance travelled. Well remember to find total distance travelled, all we need to do is add up the two distances mentioned in the question. So our total distance is 600 plus 800, which equals 1,400 metres, or that's the same as 1.4 kilometres. And then part B says to find the resultant displacement of the car by scale diagram. So remember for the scale diagram method, we want to start by choosing a scale. So we want to represent 600 metres and 800 metres on our page here. So how can we do that? Well, it's probably easiest to choose a scale of one centimetre is equal to 100 metres. And that means we'll have a six centimetre line and an eight centimetre line to represent our two vectors there. And remember the rule for adding vectors together is that we want to add the vectors nose to tail. So if I start over on the right hand side here, here's my first vector, that's my 600 metres north. So I'll label that six centimetres equals 600 metres. So you would draw a straight line that is six centimetres going up the way. And then we want 800 metres west. So we're going to go west by eight centimetres, which is the same as the 800 metres for the scale we've chosen. And doing this, we're adding the vectors nose to tail as you'll see here. And then we'll draw on the resultant vector which remember is the shortest distance from the start to the finish point. So that goes from here all the way up to here and we'll add a double arrow on that just to show it's the resultant. And then what you would do is use a ruler and measure the length of the resultant vector. And when I measured this using pen and paper, I got a value of 10.1 centimetres. We can then label our right angle in there for the triangle. And we can also measure the angle theta next to the starting point. So our angle theta in here could be measured using a protractor to be 53 degrees, which again I did manually. So we can write down that the magnitude of the resultant vector is 10.1 centimetres, which means using our scale, we can times it by 100 to get 1,010 metres. And then the angle that the resultant vector makes with the horizontal is 53 degrees that you can measure using a protractor. So that means we can write down our final answer. But remember, our angle here is not the direction. We need to use this angle to state the direction. And we can do that using either compass points or bearings. So we can say the resultant displacement is equal to 1,010 metres at 53 degrees west of north. So the way to see that is to think about the starting point. We've got north up here. This direction over here would be west. So we've moved around 53 degrees from north to get to the resultant vector. So I can say 53 degrees west of north. Or if you prefer using bearings, we could say it's 1,010 metres at a bearing of 307. Now, where does that come from? Well, to get the bearing, remember we start at the starting point and we always start at north and go around clockwise. So we start here at north on a bearing of 000, zero, zero and we move around all the way until we get to the resultant vector. Then we see that that whole angle is the same as 360 minus the 53, which gives us 307 as our bearing. We'll now look at one worked example for the calculation method, which involves the same example. So in this question, again, it says Mr. Mitchell travels 600 metres north, then 800 metres west in his new metallic indium grey Volkswagen Golf Evo match edition. So the same question as before. This time, we're just not having to find the total distance first in part A. So part A this time is just the part B from before, which is find the resultant displacement of the car by calculation this time. So we're no longer using the scale diagram method. We want to use Pythagoras and Trig, i.e. Sokotoa. So remember for the calculation method, it's useful to start with a sketch just to see what the vectors are doing. So let's say we've got our vector, which we could label A here, which is 600 meters going north. And then we've got this vector going this direction, which we could label as B, which is the 800 meters. And we could then draw the resultant vector going from here to here and put our double arrow on it. And we can then label some other things like the unknown side C, which is our hypotenuse our right angle in there, and then our angle theta next to the starting point. So to find the magnitude, first of all, remember we use Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and substituting in the numbers, we get 600 squared for side a, plus 800 squared for side b, which equals 1 million. And to get c, we then take the square root of 1 million, which gives us 1,000 meters. So that's our magnitude of the resultant displacement. And then to get the direction, remember we first find the angle using Sokotoa, particularly using tan theta. So we do tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. 
and this is equal to the opposite of the angle which is 800 divided by adjacent to the angle which is 600 and that's the same as 4 over 3 which is the same as 1.33 and then to get the angle theta you need to do inverse tan or shift tan in your calculator of 1.33 and that should give you 53 degrees. And then we can write down our final statement where we use the angle for our direction as either compass points or bearings. So we can say the resultant displacement is equal to 1000 meters at 53 degrees west of north. So again, the compass points and the bearing here just comes from the same as what we did in the previous question. So if we've got 53 degrees in here, we can say the resultant is pointing 53 degrees west of north, or as a bearing, it's the same as going from north all the way around in a clockwise direction to the resultant vector. So that's the same as 360 degrees minus the 53, which gives us 307. It then says, how does this compare with your answer to part B from the previous example? Well, remember in the previous example, our directions were the same, but our value for the magnitude of the displacement was different. We got 1,010 meters before for the scale diagram method, but 1,000 meters this time. So what we could say is that the answers are very similar. However, the calculation method provided a more precise answer. That's 1,000 meters by calculation rather than 1,010 meters found by doing a drawing. We'll now go on and do four worked examples to give you more practice. So the first couple of examples here look at motion in one dimension, and then we look at the motion where you're moving in a right angle. So question one says, during a race, a rally car makes 25 complete laps of a course of five kilometers. State the total distance traveled by the car. Well, first of all, if a course is five kilometers long and we're doing 25 complete laps of it, then we're going to travel a total distance of 25 times five, which is the same as 125 kilometers. And then to find the displacement of the car, let's draw a sketch. So let's say our track of five kilometers looked like this, and let's say that's our start and finish point there. Then we could say that if the car is doing 25 complete laps of this track, then the car will end up back at the same place it started. So this means the displacement from the starting point is zero meters, S equals zero meters as shown here. Question two then says a person walks 30 meters east along a street before awkwardly turning back and walking 15 meters west. Probably something we've all done before where you walk one way, forget something and then walk back the other way. It then says determine their total distance traveled. So remember to find total distance, we just add up the values given in the question. So we've got total distance equals 30 plus 15, which equals 45 meters. And then for part B, we want to find the displacement and we need the direction, remember, because it's a vector. So let's draw a vector diagram here. So the person is walking at 30 meters east, first of all, and then we're going to add this to the vector for going 15 meters west. And remember the rule is that we add vectors nose to tail. So we're going to get something like this where the vectors overlap. So we're adding the tail of this second vector to the nose of this first vector. And when they're overlapping like this, we can clearly see what the resultant vector will look like because remember that's the shortest distance from the start to the finish point, i.e. like this arrow shown here. And so if the person traveled 30 meters this way, but then 15 meters back, then the magnitude of the displacement will be 15 meters. And we can say that's the resultant vector. And therefore we can state our final answer with the direction. We can say displacement equals 15 meters east or 15 meters at zero 90 as a bearing. Question 3 then says one of the Iron Fleet warships carrying Theon Greyjoy sails east on a bearing of 090 on a course for 2 kilometers. It then sails south on a bearing of 180 on a course for a further 2 kilometers. So this is Game of Thrones themed and in part A it says to find the total distance traveled. So again nice and easy we just add up the values for the distances traveled. So we've got total distance equals 2 plus 2 which is the same as 4 kilometers. And then in part B we want to find the displacement of the ship by scale diagram. So we're told to use the scale diagram here, we don't get a choice. So let's choose an appropriate scale so that we could get a decent sized drawing on a page. So let's say for example we chose a scale of 1 centimeter equals 0.25 kilometers, a quarter of a kilometer. And that means if we're drawing two kilometers, we could have eight centimeter lines, which sounds pretty reasonable on a page. So remember the rule is that when we start drawing, we want to add the vectors nose to tail. So let's draw our first vector going east on a bearing of 0, 090, and we can label this as eight centimeters is equal to two kilometers. And then we're gonna have another eight centimeter line going south, which is again our two kilometers going south. And then we want to draw a resultant vector going from the start to the finish point. So we've got that with our double arrow to show it's the resultant. And we can then take our ruler and measure the length of that. And when I did this using paper, I got a value of 11.4 centimeters. We can then label some other parts. So we've got a right angle in there. And remember our angle theta is going to be the one next to the starting point. So that's going to be here, not the one here. 
So our angle theta in there we can measure using a protractor. And when I did this using a protractor, I got a value of 45 degrees. Now that should make sense because we've got two sides that are the same length here for a right angle triangle. So we could say that using a ruler we measured the magnitude of the resultant vector to be 11.4 centimetres and if we then times that by 0.25 to get it into kilometres we get 2.85 kilometres for our magnitude and then the angle that the resultant vector makes with the horizontal, the angle we measured using the protractor, is 45 degrees. So using compass points or bearings with our angle, we could say that the resultant displacement is equal to 2.83 kilometers at 45 degrees south of east. Now the way to see that is we've got east over here, we've got the resultant vector pointing down more towards south, so we can say it's moving towards south away from east, so that is 45 degrees south of east, or 2.83 kilometers at a bearing of 135. Now how do we find that? Well, remember for bearings, we always start at the starting point here and we go from north, which would be a line up here and then move in the clockwise direction until we get to the resultant vector here. So if we start at north, 0, 0, 0 and get all the way around to the resultant vector, then that's going to be 90 degrees round to here plus the 45 degrees. So that's going to give me a bearing of 135. For further practice, part C then says to calculate the displacement of the ship by calculation. So we're going to use the calculation method to hopefully get a similar answer as before. So let's start with our little sketch of the vectors. So let's label this side B and it's 2 kilometers. And then we've got this one going south, which we'll call A, and that's 2 kilometers as well. And then we've got a resultant vector, which we'll put a double arrow on, and we could call that side C. We've then got our right angle in there and our angle theta next to the starting point. So to find the magnitude, remember we use Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, which if we plug in the sides, we have 2 squared plus 2 squared, which gives us 8. And that means that c is going to be the square root of 8, which equals 2.83 kilometers. So that's exactly what was measured using the scale diagram method, which is pretty good. And then for the direction, remember we use tan theta. So we have tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which equals the opposite the angle, which is 2, divided by adjacent to the angle, which again is 2, which gives us 1. And that means to get theta, we do inverse tan of 1, which equals 45 degrees when you put it into your calculator. We can then use that angle in compass points or bearings to state our final answer. So we have resultant displacement equals 2.83 kilometers at 45 degrees south of east, or 2.83 kilometers at a bearing of 135. And we find these directions in the exact same way as I mentioned earlier in part B. So we ended up getting the same answer as we did in part B, which is pretty good. Lastly, question four, again Game of Thrones themed, says Daenerys Targaryen flies 300 meters to the south on a bearing of 180 on one of our dragons, Drogon, towards King's Landing. Drogon makes a sharp turn and travels a further 400 meters due west on a bearing of 270. By scale drawing or otherwise, find their resultant displacement. Write the direction as a bearing and as a compass direction. So here, because of the phrase by scale drawing or otherwise, this is basically telling us we can use either the scale diagram or the calculation method here. So I'm going to use the calculation method to try and be a bit quicker. So let's sketch our diagram. We've got a vector going 300 meters south and let's label that side A. We've then got a vector going 400 meters west and we can label that B. And then we've got a resultant vector going from the start to the finish point. So it's going to go down in this direction with our double arrow. And let's label that side C, our unknown hypotenuse. And we can then put in the right angle and the angle theta next to the starting point. Then to find the magnitude, we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then plugging in the numbers, we get 300 squared plus 400 squared, which equals 250,000. So to find C, we do the square root of 250,000, which gives us 500 meters when you put it into your calculator. Then to get the direction, remember for the angle first of all we use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So opposite my angle here is 400 meters and adjacent to the angle is 300 meters. So I have 400 over 300 which is the same as 1.33 and then to find angle theta we do inverse tan of 1.33 which gives us 53 degrees when you put it into your calculator. We can then use the 53 degrees to write our final answer as a bearing and as a compass direction. Now you wouldn't normally be asked to do both here, just one, but I'm getting you to do both as practice. So we can then write the resultant displacement equals 500 meters at 53 degrees west of south. Now, how do we find that? Well, here we've got south, remember? And this vector is pointing over towards west. So our resultant vector there points 53 degrees away from south towards west. So we've got 53 degrees west of south. Or as a bearing, we can say 500 meters at a bearing of 233. So how do we find that bearing? Well, remember, we go to the starting point. We think about north as being 000. And then we want to move from north all the way around 
to the resultant vector. So that's going to be 180 round to here, down to south, and then we add on 53 to get to the resultant vector. So 180 plus the 53 gives us 233 for our bearing. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.